Uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is Silvio Sushi and uh, today I'll be talking about um, a part of DBIC that I'm really excited about all the time, even though it was written like two and a half years ago. Uh, but every time I work on it, I get like really excited again and I'm like, I have to tell people about it because it's so fucking cool. Uh, and um, the reason this time uh, I got so excited about it was uh, this commit. Uh, that basically in the source generator it's paid off by about 15% to replace every semicolon with a comma. Okay, I mean, uh, this thing was actually optimized so well that apparently the semicolon, which is actually an operator in Pro 5, because it actually has to update the line number and the file, uh, if I uh, take them out, uh, actually there was a really, really tangible speed up. That uh, you know, on uh, row processing and stuff like that. So that, that, that was cool. So I got very excited again when the person said, uh, I can do a talk. I said, yes, I can do a talk. And um, then I went to, you know, try to search for this talk and I realized that I cannot put this in like 20 minutes or even 40 minutes or even an hour. That's like a day workshop. So instead, I'm not going to show you uh, how it is done inside uh, because even though it's about it's about 500 lines of code altogether. Uh, it took about two years to write, uh, you know, little by little. And every time I look at it uh, and try to like break it apart, it doesn't work very well. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it actually works. Like, what 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 does it do, right? So um, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so what what's the point of this entire thing? First of all, uh, how many of you work with databases? Exactly. Okay. Uh, every time you get something from a database, you pretty much get a two-dimensional uh, structure, right? You get you get basically a, a CSV file. Or whatever, right? uh, most of the time, when you deal with relations or things like that, uh, or even if you deal with just one table, you still want to organize it in nice hash ref with uh, you know nice names and stuff like that. Or if it is dealing with relational data, you would want to uh, go ahead and actually make uh, nice nested uh, you know, pro data structures which then can be used as JSON or stuff like that. So uh, let's see how this works. Uh, first I'm going to uh, export a whole bunch of stuff so we don't have to type this every time. And uh, then we're going to try, oh, uh, I'm going to use four tables from uh, our test schema. And uh, I cannot keep both on the screen at the same time, but they're, they're really simple and there's nothing about them. So we have an artist which has multiple cities, which have multiple tracks. Each track might be excellent and somebody might make a single CD based on that one, uh, which will have some other tracks and it's actually a CD on its own and so on and so forth. So that's our uh, mini test scheme, so to speak. And uh, if somebody wants to pull this up on their phone, that's the actual address for it. But anyway, so uh, with that in mind, so let's see. Uh, we already loaded our uh, test scheme and so on and so forth. Uh, let's get uh, the CD source and uh, execute this row parser thing that we're talking about. Um, this is not important right now. This is the important part. So basically we're saying that uh, we want to be able to parse a single column uh, result of which the first column is title. Okay? So let's see what this is going to do. It's going to think a little. And it's going to give us that. It's a piece of purple. Very simple. Uh, all it really does is uh, go to an array that we pass it in as the first argument right here. And it replaces every element of this array with a, uh, a hash ref with title being this element that we just replaced. So, pretty simple. Uh, this is it with a little more uh, columns. That's what it looks like. Okay, so uh, why is this interesting? Because uh, what we're going to do with this thing later on uh, in the case of DBAC, we're actually going to take a result directly from the cursor, feed it to this thing, and in the same place where we had the array ref that came from the cursor, 
we're going to have this nice uh, uh, you know, uh, this nice data structure neatly replaced in place. Now that's not really interesting though, uh, because well, you know, we could just use uh, slice from DBI to be able to do the same thing, right? So let's uh, go a little further. Now let's say we want the type of each CD, and we know that on our cursor the second column is the title of every track. Okay. So what this tells uh, DBIC is that the first column is from the main source, the, the, the very central thing that you are asking about, so CD in this case. So the first column will go into title. The second column will be uh, a relationship once removed from CD. So the relationship name will be tracks, and we're going to put the second value into the title um, slot, so to speak, of this related object. So let's see what's, what's this going to look like. That looks like that. So what this does is, the first part is the same. So we, we're, we're again replacing in place because uh, we're not collapsing anything for every row from the table we're going to get one data structure back, nothing else. So what do we do? The first column will go into the first hasher, which is uh, called title. And the second part will get the so-called prefetches. So uh, what this means is that the additional objects, so to speak, that are hanging off of this one will go in the second spot here and they're going to be labeled as tracks and then if we did get some, if we didn't get anything we're going to get no tracks if we did get something we're going to get the title and use the first uh, the second column as the value for title to put this a little bit more perspective uh, this is what it looks like if we add some extra columns with the same things. It looks like this. So uh, for the CD part, we're pulling title and foo, which are the first and the second column. And uh, you probably notice here they're always uh, ordered correctly. So no matter how we uh, how we pull uh, this stuff. Title. Here we had one zero, and now we're going to have zero one. And everything else will be the same. Right. So uh, we put point title into the first hasher right here, and then for the additional related object, we see are any of those nodes? No, nope, they're all defined. So then we're going to create an object off of that and put it. If we do something like this instead. We're going to have two related objects per row. That's what it's going to look like. So, so far, pretty simple. Uh, and of course, this thing can keep uh, nest arbitrary, like for example, we can do. Okay. And that's what it's going to look like. And all this is generated and applying to everything. And the best part is that the only thing that we need to it is pretty much this. So we're telling it, okay, here is a result for you, and here are the columns where we expect this result to go. The, the entire thing is stateless, so we can pretty much cache it uh, and not have to wait for this um, thinking, but instead we can put to this or something like that and then you know have it ready at the moment something. Uh, now, but again, this is something that you cannot do with DBI. You cannot do this nested stuff easily, but you can uh, do it relatively trivially with uh, some, you know, some walking, some tailor recursion, stuff like this. So it's not going to be that much of a win. Now, what if we go back to this example, and now instead of using, uh, instead of using one row 
to create one structure in the result, we want to actually collapse the stuff together. So when you have, for example, one CD and it has multiple tracks, and you do a join, what do you get? On the left side, you get the same CD over and over again. On the right side, you get the different joints, right? Now, if you have uh, CDs and tracks joined once and tracks joined the second time, what you're, what you're going to get? You're going to get a massive cross multiplication of the result and stuff like that. But actually, you're going to have only, for example, two CDs of, of the first joint and two CDs of the second joint because it is the same joint per thing. So, we want to be able to somehow very efficiently collapse this stuff, right? And additionally, we don't want to really do any kind of recursion and things like that because, well, function calls are slow in, in general and recursion is even slower because there are additional stacks being created and things like that. So, what this does if we do this, so we say ask it to collapse, and let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Because now, it doesn't anymore just take values from the cursor and just shove them somewhere. It actually needs to kind of know uh, how to tell when the same, uh, when two rows are describing the same thing. Right? So it says, I cannot calculate definitive collapse count set for CD. Fetch more unique non knowable counts. Uh, in our schema, title is not unique. Uh, because multiple artists can have the same title. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the foreign key of artist ID, which together with title is a unique constraint in the metadata of the scheme of the ID. So what's this going to do? Uh, pop, 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 it's not going to work. Oh, that's important. Things like this actually. Yeah, so. so it created something. Let's walk through that. <laughs> It's actually, it's, it's actually not that bad, and uh, the, the best part is that this is uh, generated code with comments inside, and I have all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so, this part I'm not going to talk about much, but basically all it does is um, it generates the same code ref for two cases. The first case is when you just have all your results from the cursor and you just give them to this uh, Code oh, and, and the best part of this code ref I need to mention is that it basically starts from here, this is where you put your sub curly, and it starts going down, there is one while right here, and that's it. There are no other <coughs> loops, there are no other uh, calls to somewhere else when it's or anything like this. The entire thing is a single pass per row. Uh, when we finally implemented this, uh, the ability to do three uh, levels of nesting, so to speak, uh, from, for example, from artist, city, and tracks, uh, the ability to assemble this back was improved by 17 times or something like that. So it, it, it wasn't percentage, it was times. Uh, so avoid function calls when you can. So, uh, the reason uh, this part here on the top exists is that you have two cases. In, in the first case, you have all your rows, the entire result set in this array over which you are iterating. But in the other case, this, is, this might be too much memory. So this same code ref has the ability to get a second argument, which is another code ref, which basically will call next on your cursor every time. So this will keep running until the master row, the, the leftmost one, changes. Then it will stop, and then you will move involved again for your next single result with all of its children hanging over there. But uh, other than that, this, the, the rest of the code rest is the same. So, what do we do? Uh, while we start iterating over the, the first argument this uh, code ref, the actual array that has all our results. Okay? Uh, we have, we keep track of position, we keep track of what we call a collapse index. The collapse index is something that uh, looks at our inflate map and basically says, okay, 
I have one kind of object and then I'll have another kind of object. So basically we'll have the main one and then we'll have traps. And in the collapse index for every uh, scene type of object, so to speak, it will have a slab. So the objects of CD will go to collapse index 0, the tracks will go to collapse index 1, and so on and so forth. And then they will be hit on stuff like this. So this is, uh, means the following. So any time that we see an object of type CD, we're going to shove it into the sub hash refs of denoted by the first column and the second column of the stuff that came from the database. Now, why is that? Because here, the first column and the second column are the unique part of CD. So, every CD is unique by these two values, and we already checked they're not going to be done, and so on and so forth. So, anytime that we refer to this thing, we know that we're referring to a particular CD. That's why every time this loop you know, makes a revolution, so to speak, we always can put the pigeon hole in the right in the right spot. Uh, the same thing uh, goes for the tracks. Now, the tracks are being only referred to by the second column. Nothing else refers to the first ones, but every track belongs to a parent, right? Which is the CD, which is being defined by the first and the second column. So, Anytime that we see this, we will be able to refer to the correct uh, track, and so on and so forth. So, uh, going further. Uh, one second. I, 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 I got lost here myself. Uh, so, we start going down uh, the, the result, right? And look, okay, do we... Uh, first, we go ahead and we make the first CD if we have never seen it before. So, is it defined? It's not defined. Reds go forward a little bit and make this CD right here. So, its artist is the first column, its title is the second column. Let's go further to the relations. Is the second column defined? It is? Okay. Then we're going to add a collector into this city that we're working on right now. This part here is equal to this part here. And then we're going to add tracks into this object that we just created. So we're creating our uh, empty collector for those multiple tracks. And then, sorry, made a mistake. If there are no related tracks, there is nothing defined here, we're just going to make an empty collector, nothing else. Otherwise, we are going to push into this very same collector of tracks, we're going to add the tracks. Uh, object and we're going to create it right here. And then this is the end of the while of this while loop because we'll keep uh, going through the actual roles that we supplied it and it's going to start replacing one by one the positions in this very same array but because we're collapsing stuff the array will have to shrink at some point. So basically we keep to this loop and we go through the first um, the first position and then let's say we have one CD and we have three uh, tracks for it. So in the first position we're going to put the first CD and the first track to sort here. Then we're going to go on the second position in this uh, array. We're going to say, aha, this is the same CD that we already seen before. We're going to assemble its track only 
and we're going to put it back on the seed that we've already seen. We're going to move further, and we're going to keep doing that, and because we have only one CD and three tracks, we're going to end, go to the end of the array, and so far we have only one uh, final object, so to speak, in this array. What we're going to do, we are just going to cut this array to where we need to start. Which, by the way, even this, uh, if you go ahead and do it the, the normal way of, you know, splice and so on and so forth, even something like this actually makes a difference of, uh, of about 20% uh, depending on how big your result set is. Okay. Uh, those uh, particular routines were pretty much optimized to this point that there is no known better way to make the Perl VM do something like that. And that's it. And this thing will actually just work. Now, of course, this is not really interesting. The more interesting thing is what happens when you do uh, stuff like that. So basically, we're going to... Um, let's say we're going to add tracks. Then we're going to add the... CD single, then we're going to get the tracks of this single CD, and let's see what then. So we it does compile our code there and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this code there, uh, and we are going to feed it some comps. Like the way we would feed the results uh, from David. So for now let's give it just one row with the various one to seven. Yeah, already. 
Over 20 minutes. Over 20 minutes. <laughs> Three more minutes to get this to run. Okay. <laughs> Uh, see, this, this this actually worked when I was trying to you know to to, to plan to show it. Of course. Yeah, of course, it, it, it's always the case. Watch D one. Okay, so the code is there. Ah, okay, of course. Uh, because this thing returns two things: uh, the row, the row. The row parser maker returns a thing that we need to check after that, which counts might be problematic to double check them in case somebody was doing something bad. So now it will actually work. Uh, like this. There we go. One through seven. So this works. <coughs> does this work? And this doesn't work. Okay, I guess that's all the time we have. <laughs> uh, I will try to make it run uh, during the next talk, and I will give uh, a very short presentation after that with this thing actually running. How is that? <laughs>